Hey guys, today I was gonna go over CO2 plumbing and uh, how to do it properly for your air shifter, chute release, boost control solenoids, the whole nine yards. So uh, what I've got here is a two and a half pound bottle with an adjustable regulator. Uh, you know, you, you can use like a 10 ounce or whatever you want. The reason I'm using a two and a half is because it's also got an air launcher. That's what this large line is for. So this goes back to the trunk to fill the air launcher. So uh, it's pretty straightforward on plumbing these things. I use push lock hose on all of this stuff for CO2 and then I cover it in this Mr. Gasket uh, thermal shield, I think is what they call it. Let's go look. Uh, I cover it in that right there, thermal sleeving. So it's pretty heavy duty stuff. And uh, I use standard quarter inch uh, DOT push lock. So it's used for like air brakes on big trucks. But I cover all the hoses with this stuff just because one, it's a little bit more attractive looking and two, it is, uh, it's good for heat, it's good for abrasion. So you don't want a CO2 leak to happen, you know, when you're in between rounds. So one tip I will give you is that you should use a pair of cable cutters of some sort to cut this stuff. And uh, that's so you can get a nice flush square cut on it. So a lot of people have problems with the uh, CO2 leaking in, in their cars. And I believe a lot of it just comes down to rushing. So I'm gonna go over how I did this. The small line, the quarter inch line that comes off of the bottle is down to this T right here. And one leg of the T comes over here and feeds these two solenoids. So the top one is for the chute release handle and the bottom one is for the shifter. So what you wanna do is you wanna come in on uh, input number one on the solenoid. This is a three port Mac valve. Uh, you come in on, on port number one, you vent this one, and then you come out right here to your device. So right now we've got 125 pounds of pressure on all these lines and I don't have any leaks. I'm gonna leave it like this. I already tested all this stuff with a little bit of Windex, make sure none of it was bubbling up, but spraying Windex at all the little joints if it starts to bubble, you know you have a leak. So the other leg of this comes down and goes, I'll try to show you, right there to this bulkhead, all right? So this is a uh, firewall bulkhead for the CO2 line. Disregard this bulkhead, that's for the fire system. That's different stuff. So it comes out of that bulkhead right there and then just travels over to the solenoids. So this is two three port Mac valves from Holly and we've got an inlet. This is our inlet right here. It's coming into the fill solenoid in port number one. And then it is bridged across to the vent solenoid uh, over here. So the output to the wastegate is right here. So this is CO2 in into port number one and then we're bridging the two of them together, right? And then we've got, um, we've got the vent over here so that if we activate the decrease solenoid, we can remove pressure. And if we don't activate the decrease solenoid, then it just stays shut and it doesn't leak off into the, uh, into the atmosphere. And then out of the T comes down here to a Y and feeds the top of both of these wastegates. So I'm gonna step back a little bit, there we go. So we've got the feed coming out of the two solenoids to a Y and then down to the top of both of the gates. You put your dome pressure sensor on top of one of the gates. So I see a lot of questions asked about how to plumb a twin turbo setup. This is the same exact way. This is a single turbo setup, but it's got two gates on it. So it's the same, same scenario, right? You still want your dome pressure to hit both, the top of both of the gates. We only need one dome pressure sensor. So that's all there is for CO2 plumbing for the, the boost control. You also have to add in more uh, lines to the intake manifold to reference the bottom of the gate. So what you do is you tie these two lower halves of the, uh, the, the waste gates together, and then you run a hose from here. And we'll follow it along over to here and into the intake manifold. So 
this, uh, what this does is it puts pressure on the bottom of the gate. It makes it a little bit more easy to tune, a little bit easier to control because it's got pressure on the bottom of the gate trying to open it, but you're using dome pressure to close it. It, it stabilizes things a bit more and it gets closer to running uh, to one to one when it comes to dome pressure versus actual boost. So that is CO2 plumbing. Um, these, you guys are gonna ask, I'm sure you're gonna ask is where do you get the hose? Where do you get the fittings? Uh, I use, these are all Earl's products like the, the little NPT T's, uh, the NPT um, male, male adapters, that's all Earl's products. The push lock stuff I get from McMaster car. So they're all stainless and uh, you know, they, they seal up really well and relatively cheap. The same thing with the Y's, these come from McMaster car. You don't need anything high heat here, you know, obviously, but uh, if you want to, you can, as well as the bulkheads. The bulkheads also come from McMaster car and all this type of stuff all comes from McMaster car. So you're using quarter inch push lock and you're, uh, you're feeding everything basically through eighth inch NPT. So typically what I like to do is buy like, if I'm gonna do one car, I buy like 15, 20, 90s and uh, like 15, 20 straights and then a handful of T's and keep them around. If you're only doing your own car, you can go out there and try to count it all out, but it's easier to have a drawer full of this stuff and grab a hold of what you need and then keep some spares on hand in case you have, you know, have one that goes bad. So. Again, to recap, out of the CO2 tank, and notice we've got uh, like 140 PSI on that thing, right? And it's not leaking, right? Just to confirm, it's, it's, it's open. We have no leaks going on. And uh, we, <clears throat> we spray everything down with Windex, use a good, stiff, don't use that, that cheap, you know, um, crap super flexible rubbery type push lock hose that stuff leaks the the harder stuff the stuff that's a little bit more difficult to work with it actually works out a lot better so spray them all down with windex and run your outputs off of this side so here's an output to the shifter let me zoom out here uh the shifter is not in the car yet but i just kind of stubbed it out there just so that it's you know done so that's all there is to it really and if you've got an air launcher I use this little, the air launcher kit from uh, White Racing came with this little clippered thing. Uh, this is just a temp thing. My fab guy is going to build me a little tab that holds it, you know, right off of here when I bring the car back to him. So, but either way, another good, uh, good practice when this stuff gets pressurized, not so much this hose, but when this stuff gets pressurized, it, it'll try to flop all over the place, right? So this is all unattached right now, but uh, it will be attached once all the carbon goes in the back of the car so just keep an eye on how you attach this stuff make sure that it actually attaches well you know every foot or so or if it's around a bend but you want it to lay up nice make nice gradual bends don't try to kink it and you'll have a you'll have a trouble free operation so same thing if you've got onboard air there's no difference here with what i'm showing you just apply your so, you know, substitute your CO2 tank for your onboard air compressor. Your onboard air compressor will have an outlet and just, you know, do what I just showed you in this video, but based off of your onboard air compressor. So hopefully that answers some of y'all's questions about plumbing CO2. Uh, if you have questions about how to wire up your boost control solenoids, I've made videos on that already. And that's about it. See ya.